Hi guys, if you're watching this, evidently uh, you are one of my students at the University of Haute Alsace, either at the Fondry Business School, FSSEIG, or, or you are at IUT in town in Mulhouse, or possibly you are even at FLS Ash on the Ilberg campus. Anyway, uh, you're looking at a guy whose name is Tony Jolly, T O N Y. J-O-L-L-E-Y and I teach on all of these three campuses in a range of subjects and what I need to do is be able to introduce myself just a little bit to you and I'm doing this in case it is impossible to do it face to face with you in the classroom in the light of what's been happening with COVID. So here we go. Um, if you want to be in touch with me, then you can use uh, email addresses. You'll find uh, my email address on the university anywhere, but here I can give it to you. Um, uh, there's a complicated long one and a short version. So here you go. Anthony, A-N-T-H-O-N-Y dash Ian, I-A-N dot Jolly, J O L L E Y at UHA point FR. Or um, I get that to default to my uh, Gmail account, which is T J O L L E Y at Gmail dot com. So if you need to get in contact with me, there are, those are the two principal ways, okay? Um, what I perhaps need to tell you a little bit about is what I suspect will be the case this September, which is that uh, for myself, uh, I am likely to be working from home with you. Um, don't panic about that too much. I have been using blended learning environments uh, since before the term was actually invented uh, because I developed my first websites for learning and teaching in about 1994 whereas the internet really only arrived in France in the educational sector in the year 2000. So I've got a fair amount of experience of using these materials in contact with you. If it is the case that we have to do things at distance rather than in the classroom. That would be a pity because I thoroughly enjoy the interaction. Uh, it's more fun, obviously, than doing things at distance. But if it can't happen, it can't happen. We are currently in the middle of August waiting for decisions by the Education Nationale, the university as our employer, and by medical specialists as to who can work on site face to face with students and who cannot. So pending that, um, I am preparing materials to be used at distance or if we can safely come into class, then I can use some of these materials with you in the classroom as well. So the first set of materials that uh, I'm going to be using with you are on my website. The website, um, with a little play on my name, is called Tonyversity. So I'll give you the address. It's www.tonyversity.com forward slash students, S-T-U-D-E-N-T-S. Please don't forget to add the students or you'll wind up on another part of my online empire. Okay, so once you get there, there is no login to be made. There is no password. The materials are just there for you. The site is fairly easy to operate. There is a menu across the top, which simply has a list of the faculties where I have been teaching and where I am teaching at the moment. All you need to do is to think, what faculty am I in? Hover your cursor or click on the name of that faculty 
and you will see in a menu all of the units that I teach in that faculty. Simply choose yours, click on it, and there you are. You will find a base page and also a number of other pages that spring out with lots of further information. Now, I don't actually host videos on my site, but I do have quite a lot of video and audio material that will be linked to my site um, via YouTube. So the link will be on my site, but it will take you to my own YouTube channel, which has teaching materials on it, broken down for you into topics that we're going to be studying together. And it also has other things to do with me, which might be poetic or musical, but that's another issue. So between YouTube and Tonyversity, your teaching materials should be online and available. Okay, how am I going to do this? Well, obviously, with what we've been doing in terms of COVID uh, from the end of February through to July, um, we've had quite a bit of experience of trying to deliver things exclusively online. Now, let's start with the obvious. Um, recording things or live streaming. Live streaming proved problematical for a number of reasons. Who is going to host the material? Who is going to stream it? Is it going to be something that we have to pay for? Are all students going to be available at a point where the material is streamed? Even if all students are available, will the technology hold up at my end, at the server's end, or at the student's end? We began to discover that perhaps 20% of students at the end of that chain were for one reason or another not getting the signal, the picture, etc. Result of that was 20% of students were getting nothing. Now, if students then say, ah, oh, I missed it, could you do it again? How many times are we going to have to do that lecture? So what I and a number of my colleagues did was to actually decide not to stream our lectures, but to record them and allow you to download them at your leisure. And downloading is a lot less difficult than receiving a streamed program or film, as you know from your own experience, I'm sure. So you could download it, open it when you want on your computer, and view it without any difficulties. The only issue is downloading, which is a lot easier than streaming. So what I've decided to do, initially at least for Rontray 2020, probably for the first semester in 2020, is to put materials up there which are recorded and asynchronous. You may well have on Adieu, our timetable program at the university, a slot with my name on it and the title of the course that you're doing. If I cannot appear, which seems likely at the moment, then you will go to uh, my website and or I will email you with instructions once I've got your email addresses from the Secretariat. I will email you with the links that you would need to my site to be able to receive the um, recorded materials that I have done and the instructions for the work that you are to do together in the classroom, outside the classroom, and to then submit in one form or another. Depending on how things work, I may well offer the opportunity to, say, go online on a given slot during the week, 
and say I'm here for questions if you have any or discussion if you need it. Um, I will also evidently endeavour to answer emails. Obviously it's a lot more time consuming because in a classroom one person can ask a question that a lot of people are thinking whereas with email one just simply gets barred by a bar uh, uh, bombarded sorry by a whole load of the same queries from a number of people so there we go that's how things are going to operate it's going to be a mix of asynchronous learning via downloading of materials that i'm going to produce for you and then instructions that you have on my website as to what is to be done, what is the end product, what I am going to assess and how you can work together with your colleagues either in the classroom or in fact outside the classroom digitally using Google, Google Meet, Zoom, Skype, the tools that you yourself or Google Docs, the tools that you yourselves find most easy to use and manipulate. OK, so that is, in theory, at least how we are seeing it at the moment, how I am seeing uh, what I am likely to be doing at the beginning of this academic year on the 1st of September 2020. OK. If you have any immediate questions or concerns about that, then uh, you can get in contact with me at the email address, I, or one of the addresses I gave you, tjolly at gmail.com being perhaps the best of them, okay? So there we go. I hope that we do get to see each other and to meet, but at least now you know what I look like and you can recognise me when eventually, I hope, we do get into campus to meet up. OK. Anyway, there we go. So I hope you have a successful 2020 academic year. And I hope you enjoy what I've been putting together for you, even though perhaps it won't be quite the same as being in the classroom all ourselves. OK. All right. Thank you very much. Bye for now.